Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we will solve few simple questions on capacitors so uh, until now I have been taking few difficult questions so thought of taking a few simple questions as well and uh, at the end of the video I will give you a homework a very good question that is a difficult one okay so that we will solve in the next lecture so let's start with this question so we have to compute the energy stored in the capacitor C1 and C2 respectively right total energy sum of the total energy so basically how will you compute that uh, first of all we have to identify whether this is a first order circuit or second order circuit what I am observing this is actually a second order circuit because this uh, capacitor and this capacitor actually uh, the energy stored by them are independent of each other the voltages and current are independent of each other right of these two capacitors but is that of any use to us no right uh, they have asked us the, the total energy stored in the capacitor when will the uh, what will be the total energy stored the total energy stored will be at the steady state because at steady state both of these capacitors will be open circuit no matter what if this is a stable circuit okay so uh, if i have only resistors present and the current source is not directly connected across the capacitors so what will happen is that they will become open circuit at steady state and that will be the point at which they will store the maximum energy so that first intuition you should have right how how will uh, this capacitor store the energy that thing you should know okay it doesn't matter if this is a second order circuit because we don't have to find out the uh, graph plot the gra uh, graphs of uh, voltage and currents that we don't need to find out right we just need to find out the energy stored that is at the steady state so at steady state if i just draw the circuit at steady state what will happen is that this capacitor will be open circuit and this capacitor will be open circuit so through here right if this open circuit current can flow through this region and through this then this cap this caps can become open circuit because currents are zero okay what would have happened is that let's say let's assume that this two kilohm was not present then there would have been a problem okay no not this two let's say this two kilohm and this three kilohm was not present then there would have been a problem because this six million current has to flow through this c1 so this would have never settled the voltage would have kept on increasing but here this uh like uh current source right has a path so obviously the uh like capacitors will settle it will be a stable circuit okay so uh, what will be the final steady state balance so i can mark this potentials like this this will be like this capacitor c1 will charge like this plus minus vc1 and this capacitor c2 will charge like this plus minus vc2 okay so that is the case over here so now what will happen is that i can find out the currents through this right so so some of the current will flow through this and some of the current will flow through this path so these two are in parallel actually and 2 kilo and 7 kilo are in series so what is the current through here i1 and i2 so i1 will be basically simple cdr it will be uh, 6 into uh, 9 divided by 12 so it is 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 so it will be uh, 1.5 into 3 that is uh, almost uh, 1.5 into 3 that is 4.5 okay so it will be 4.5 amperes not amperes sorry milliamperes right and this current i2 will actually be lower current obviously 1.5 milliamperes now what we need to find out we need to find out vc1 and this vc2 what is this vc2 actually this right this current is zero actually through here this current will be zero okay this current will be zero and the drop across this right will be same the drop same as the drop across 7 kilo ohm so th what is the drop across this 7 kilo ohm the 7 kilo ohm drop right is the current that is flowing through this that is 1.5 milliamps into 7 so 7 into 1.5 milliamps basically and so vc2 will be 7 kilo into 1.5 milliamperes so this will almost come out to be 7 into 0.3.5 so this will be 10.5 volts okay and what about the vc this is vc2 infinity okay this is a steady state okay we're not talking about transient state right now we're talking about steady state because infinity the circuit will look something like this and what about vc1 so vc1 will be simply uh this current multiplied by 2 kilohm so what is this i2 i2 is again only 1.5 only it is like we are not depending on i1 so it is 1.5 into 2 so it will be 3 volts okay so uh, vc1 will be 3 so what will be the energy stored so energy stored right ec1 will be half c vc1 whole square c1 vc1 whole square so it is half into c1 
C1 is how much? C1 is 2 micro into VC1 whole square. VC1 is 3 whole square. Okay. And what is EC2? EC2 is half C2 VC2 whole square. So it is half C2 is how much? C2 is 4 micro. <laughs> into 4 micro into VC2 whole square. VC2 is what? VC2 is 10.5 volts. So it will be 10.5 volts whole square. So now if I just compute this both of them together, right? Right, I will just uh, compute with gate calculator. The sum of these two, right, will be something like this. So this is 3 square plus 2 into 10.5 whole square. Okay, 229. Okay, so your answer will be 229.5 micro joules so this will be the total energy total energy will be the sum of the two so this question was pretty straightforward now let's solve the next question so in this question we have to plot the voltage VAB across the current source uh, if the current source is assumed to be a unit step current so first of all this might look daunting at first because there are so many resistors present over here and like uh, and only but a single capacitor is present but so many resistors are present so first thing that should come into your mind is this circuit is a first order circuit so if this is a first order circuit then this should be a simple task for you what you have to do just find out the r equivalent across this capacitor and all the work will be done because you have to plot the voltage across this current source or you have to plot the voltage across this capacitor both are the same thing right so if i just replace this ab terminals with the equivalent resistance then everything will be simple so how do i replace so if you have studied network theory from prefusion you know the concept of uh, equipotential points so if i find out this point right this point and this point are actually equipotential right so not uh, sorry not this and this sorry this and this point because if i travel from this point to A and if I travel from this point to A, I am covering the same distance that is 1 ohm and 1 ohm. Same for towards me. So I am covering 3 ohms and from here also I am covering 3 ohms again. So these two points right, if I mark these points, its name is a C, D and E, F. So C, D are equipotential and E, F are also equipotential. So if C, D are equipotential right, so the potential between these two points are actually zero. That is the meaning of equipotential points. If you couldn't understand, please go to our network theory playlist on network uh, on prefusion. There you can understand all these concepts. So if these two potentials are zero, what will happen is that these two points are same only, right? C and D are points are same. And this is common point already. So this one and one O will actually be a contained parallel. Okay. So here the equivalent circle will get reduced to this. This one and one actually will be in parallel. So this will be C and D. And what will happen is this these two points and these two points will overlap each other so this 2 ohm and 2 ohm also will come to, into parallel with each other so this will be again 2 parallel with 2 ohm and the same will be followed here as well this 1 ohm and 1 ohm will be parallel with each other one parallel with 1 ohm and one more thing is that if these two points are same right so it will be it will become simply uh, like uh, short circuited this 3 ohm will be short circuited as this 3 ohm will i can simply ignore so overall circuit will become something like this okay this will still be EB and still I have this capacitor over here what is the capacitance value 2 farad okay so if I further reduce this circuit right so this will become 0 0.5 0 0.5 1 ohm and this is 1 ohm so total overall this will become a circuit like this <laughs> and a capacitor so now this become became a simple rc circuit right i hope you can do this now not one i'm sorry two ohm. and this is what is the current uh, current is is it's a unit step right so it will be u of t so can you plot the current waveform of a simple uh, voltage waveform of a simple uh, uh, parallel rc circuit yes you can right so it's simply what will happen initially this capacitor will become short circuited so all of the current will flow through this capacitor so the initial voltage will be zero across this resistor then slowly this capacitor will charge and its voltage will increase slowly hence the all of the current will flow through this resistor and not through this so at the waveform will be exponential and it will be like this right and at steady state what will be the voltage voltage right will be i times r that is 2 times r that is 2 2 volts 
and it will reach steady state almost around 4 tau where tau is r into c this is 2 into 2 that is 4 seconds okay and this will be my vab so this question was rather simple not difficult simple parallel rc circuit concept so uh, i will leave you this question right sorry not this c should uh, c can take any value right now in this question c can take any value and i will leave you homework for this question and in the next lecture i will actually solve this question this is a very very good question and good concept uh, can come out of this question right so if you want more concepts like this and if you want to study comprehensively from us you can go visit our website prefusion.in link to it will be present in the description of the uh, youtube video and on the comment also uh, there we have launched our various courses present courses like analog vlsi and digital vlsi also we are uh, teaching for gate as well so either uh, if you are pre preparing for gate or placements you can uh, consider our uh, courses thank you for watching and happy learning